Hello, welcome to MAN 1107 Understanding Accounting and Financial Statements, Chapter 15. Discuss the user's accounting information. Two, describe accounting professionals. Three, identify the foundation of the accounting system. Four, outline the steps in the accounting cycle. Five, explain financial statements. 6. Discuss financial ratio analysis. 7. Describe the role of budgeting. and 8. Outline accounting international practices. Now accounting is the process of measuring, interpreting, and communicating financial information to enable people inside and also outside the firm to make informed decisions. Accounting is like looking back at how things had happened at a company during a particular point in time. Now according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 1.2 million people work as accountants in the United States. Users of accounting information include those inside, as I mentioned, also outside of the organization. The information helps them make important decisions. Accounting information helps plan and control daily and also long range operations. As I mentioned before, accounting information is used by folks both inside and also outside of the organization. For example, you would have a owner or a stockholder who would be interested in evaluating how the firm's doing uh, and maybe an investor might want to look at information in order to make a determination what they want to invest in this business. Uh, you might have employees or union officials that might want to look at how a company's doing uh, doing contract negotiations. Uh, or uh, let's say that you are a bank uh, or a supplier and uh, a bank you want to lend money to a uh, company so you're going to use accounting information in order to evaluate credit ratings to make a determination whether you would want to loan money to that company so there are folks both inside the organization as well as outside of the organization that rely heavily on accounting information to help employees understand how their work affects the bottom line Many companies share sensitive information with their employees and teach them how to understand and use financial statements. Proponents of this idea of open book management believe that allowing employees to view financial information helps them better understand how their work contributes to the company's success, which in turn benefits them. The natural progression of business begins with financing. Okay, so subsequent steps would include investing, which will lead to operating the business. So all organizations, including nonprofits, perform three basic activities financing, which is funding, two, investing, which are assets to run a business, and then three, operating, selling goods and services or managing expenses. Without financing activities, a business or nonprofit may be hard pressed to get the next get to the next level to perform investing or operating activities. There are three basic types of accountants. You have public, management, and government uh, slash not for profit accountants. Now, public accountants provide services for individuals or firms for a fee. Now, you've probably all heard of a CPA. So a CPA demonstrates their accounting knowledge by meeting state education and experience requirements through a series of rigorous exams. Now, some management accountants achieve a similar designation uh, called a certified management accountant or a CMA designation through experience and passing once again a very comprehensive exam. Now management accountants are focused on information for decision making. 
Now, government and not-for-profit accountants, uh, which are very similar to uh, management accountants, also are focused on making the organization more efficient and more effective. Generally speaking, accounting principles, okay, I'm sorry, generally accepted accounting principles, the GAP, encompass the convention rules and procedures for determining acceptable accounting and financial reporting. So think of that as like a rule book if you're playing a game. The Financial Accounting Standards Board uh, is responsible for evaluating and setting or modifying GAAP in the US. So as things change, it's their responsibility to make sure they're staying on top of things as they change. Now in recent years with some of the fraud that has occurred uh, going back about 15 or 20 years or so, uh, Congress passed uh, some legislation uh, called the Sarbanes-Oxley Act. And Sarbanes-Oxley are a set of regulations in response to cases, as I mentioned, of accounting fraud. I'm sure you probably remember one that goes back to uh, the late uh, 1990s and also early 2000s with Enron, which was a company that was one of the top companies in the world and then kind of fell through some fraudulent activities. So Surveys actually put some rules in place to help prevent those type of things of happening in the future. The accounting process deals with financial transactions between a firm and its employees, customers, suppliers, and owners, banks, and also various government agencies. The procedures by which accountants convert data about individual transactions to financial statements is called the accounting cycle. Now the backbone of accounting is the accounting equation. The accounting equation consists of three fundamental terms and reflects the financial position of a firm. You have assets, which are anything of value owned or leased by a firm. You have liability, which is anything a business owes to creditors or the claims of a firm's creditors. And then you have owner's equity, the owner's initial investment in the business plus profits that were not paid out to owners over the time in the form of cash dividends. A strong owner's equity position is evidence of a firm's financial strength and stability. So it is very important to remember that assets equals liabilities and owner's equity always. That is one of those basic things to put in your business uh, toolbox. Again, the uh, accounting equation of assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Now the accounting equation also illustrates what's called double entry bookkeeping, the process by which accounting transactions are recorded. For each transaction recorded, assets must always equal liabilities plus equity, and each transaction must have an offsetting transaction. Now, like everywhere, there has been a significant impact that technology has had on accounting. Computers have streamlined the accounting process from a manual bookkeeping and ledger entries. Computers have made accounting easier and faster. Web software packages allow users to access their complete accounting systems from anywhere using a standard browser. With accounting software programs and Microsoft Excel spreadsheets for forecasting and budgeting, the need for calculators, adding machines, ledgers, pencils, and yes, even erasers, are a thing of the past when it comes to accounting. Financial statements, which we'll talk in a greater detail in the following slides, provide managers with essential information needed to evaluate the liquidity position of an organization. Financial statements refer to a company's ability to meet current obligations by converting assets to cash. It's required by all public companies to report their financial statements at the end of each three-month period 
as well at the end of each fiscal year. Now there are four basic types of financial statements. You have balance sheet, income statement, statement of owner's equity, and statement of cash flow. Now financial statements not only provide information about a company's financial position, but they also provide information about changes in financial position which is useful when making a wide range of decisions. Financial statements provide managers with information for evaluating the organization's ability to meet current obligations and needs, its profitability, and its overall financial health. Now the balance sheet is the first of these statements showing three classifications of assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. The balance sheet follows the accounting equation with the left side in descending order of liquidity or convertible to cash of assets or what the firm owns. On the right side of the equation are the claims against the firm's assets. So liabilities and owner's equity indicate the source of the firm's assets are listed in the order in which they are due. Cash is always listed first on the left side of the balance sheet because of its most liquid of all the assets. Now a good way of thinking about a balance sheet is that it's kind of like a snapshot picture of where the business stands at any point in time. Whereas the balance sheet, as I mentioned, is a snapshot, the income statement is more like a video. Income statements maintain information to calculate financial ratios. The income statement indicates the flow of resources that reveals the performance of the organization over a specific time period. Financial results are evaluated in terms of revenues, expenses, and profits, again, over a given time period. Income statements are sometimes called P&L or profit and loss statements. A key number to focus on is the bottom line. Keeping costs under control is a very important part of running any business. And many managers focus on revenues, actually unfortunately without actually managing the cost. The income statement section of interest to investors and also to analysts happens to deal with operating items such as revenues and expenses directly related to the operating of the business. Now the statement of owner's equity is designed to show the components of the change in equity from the end of one fiscal year to the end of the next. It begins with the amount of equity shown on the balance sheet at the end of the prior year. So what you do is you take net come as added, cash dividends paid to owners are subtracted, and any additional capital contributions are added to equity and withdrawals are subtracted. The statement of owner's equity uses information for both the balance sheet and also the income statement. A fourth statement uh, is the statement of cash flows. It shows the sources and uses of cash during a period of time. This report is important. An inadequate cash flow is a reason for many businesses will fail. Many small businesses will tell you they regard this as the most important financial statement. The statement of cash flow shows the relevant information about a firm's cash receipts and cash payments from operations, investments, and financing during a specific accounting period. Now due to the widespread use of accrual accounting which recognizes revenues and costs when they occur and not when actual cost changes hands, a statement of cash flow is prepared. Now the statement of cash flow is concerned with the flow of cash into and out of the business, similar to a checking account for a household. Now let's talk about financial ratio analysis. 
Financial ratios help managers interpret statements by comparing data about the firm's current activities. Financial ratios are one of the most common tools used to measure the firm's liquidity, profitability, activity, and also reliance on debt financing and the effectiveness of managed resource utilization. Commonly used ratios are categorized by the specific purposes, which include liquidity ratios, activity ratios, profitability ratios, and leverage ratios. Comparing ratios of similar companies help managers understand their firm's performance relative to key competitors. Financial ratios provide information about comparisons between companies, industries, time frames, and a company within its industry. The first ratio I want to talk about is the liquidity ratio. Liquidity ratios measure a firm's ability to meet its short-term obligations. So as you look at this slide, the current ratio shows that Diane's Java has $2.58 of current assets for every $1 of current liabilities. Now, uh, in this case, probably a current ratio of 2.2 to 1 is okay, it's satisfactory. Now, Diane's asset ratio is 1.5 to 1. So, Diane's Java appear to have a strong level of liquidity. Now, ratios should be compared across periods and within firms uh, within the industry. Now, the ability for a company to convert short term assets into cash to cover current debts is, a critical, is of critical importance when lenders are seeking repayment. Activity ratios measure the difference, or I'm sorry, measure the effectiveness of management uses of the firm's resources. Now, two key activity ratios are inventory turnover and total asset turnover. Now, inventory turnover rates can vary widely from industry to industry. Now, higher total asset turnover ratios indicate a greater efficiency in how the company's running. Now the inventory ratio of 5.13 on the slide shows efficiency compared to the industry standard. Now Kroger has an industry standard of 11.4, Nike has a turnover of 4.5. So inventory turnover can vary depending on the type of products that you're actually selling. An asset turnover of 2.15 indicates that for every $1 worth of assets generated, $2.15 worth of revenue. Now, generally speaking, the higher the ratio or the more turns, the better. The industry ratios do matter when determining the worthiness of a particular ratio. The asset turnover ratio tends to be higher in consumer products industries, which has a smaller asset base, but high sales volume. Now, firms with large asset bases, like telecommunications, utilities, for example, uh, will have a lower asset turnover. Now profitability ratios measure the organization's overall financial performance by evaluating its ability to generate revenues in excess of operating costs and other expenses. All of these ratios indicate positive evaluations of the current operations as you look at it. Now gross profit margin indicates gross profits compared to sales. Net profit indicates the firm's profit. Now, net profit margins are around 5%, but vary by industry. Now, the return on equity indicates a firm's net income as compared to average equity. Now, a firm's gross profit margin is an indication of how well it is in controlling its expenses or in costs of inventory and the manufacturing efficiency of its products. Now, for service industries with low overhead tend to be more recession resistant with higher profit margins. Now, leverage ratios measure the extent to which the firm relies on debt financing 
So this type of information is of particular interest to investors and also lenders. If management has assumed too much debt in financing, the firm's operation problems may arise in meeting future interest payments and repaying outstanding loans. So budgeting. Although financial statements discussed in this chapter focus on past business activities, they also provide the basis for planning the future. Now technology has improved the efficiency of the budgeting process. The cash budget is one of the most important budgets prepared by a firm. Because the accounting department is an organization is the organization's financial nerve center, it provides much of the data for budget development. Now, as we become more of a, a global and global economy, accounting procedures and practices must be uh, adapted to uh, accommodate an international business environment. As market economies and countries have developed, the demand for accounts has also increased. Now, hopefully, this has been helpful in terms of understanding the chapter a little better. Thanks for watching.